What's going on, guys? It's Zoe with off DFS. Here to bring you another uh, Monday Night Football breakdown for the two games that we have on today's slate. No, not a showdown. I know we're used to getting the showdowns, the, the single primetime games that we get on Monday night. But um, the NFL, they decided they really kind of want to give us these back-to-back -back weeks of two games, which kind of counterintuitive because you can't watch both games at the same time unless maybe you got like red zone or something like that. But, um, yeah, we got two games on the slate. We got the Eagles taking on the Buccaneers, and we have the Rams taking on the Bengals. Should be, one game should be better than the other one, I would expect, of course, as always. Hopefully, nothing weird happens on the slate, and we can break this down and actually find us some money. If you guys are new here, you guys haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the content that we're putting out over here on the channel. And drop a like if this video or any of the other videos have helped you guys win some bread or helped you with some of the process that you're trying to do when it comes down to breaking down these slates. Um, Sorry, yesterday, couldn't get any WNBA content out. I put some stuff out on the community tab, so definitely make sure you guys subscribe because on the days that I can't do a video or can't go live, do a breakdown or something like that with BK, I'm going to try to drop notes onto the community tab so you guys still have something coming from me if you're not a part of the Patreon and stuff like that because I do value you guys on YouTube. I really am appreciative for all the subs that we've been getting over the past couple of months. It means a lot, and thank you guys for rocking and riding with your boy, and hopefully we can do the same thing through this NFL season. The big win hasn't came yet, but I know I know it's only a matter of time. It's ticking. The process is getting fine-tuned, and we're going to find that win that is going to take us to the promised land, and we're going to win some big money. I know it's coming. Um, going over here, I, pretty pretty decent slate. Kind of kind of interesting. We got two offenses that I think are really going to have to pass inside this first game with the Eagles taking on Tampa Bay, and then the second game is kind of a toss-up in the air because of uh, Joe Burrow. Questionable with that, that calf strain that he's been dealing with. So um, more interest, of course, is going to be inside this Philly and, Tampa, Philly and Tampa Bay game. Pretty sure a lot of people are probably going to be looking more towards uh, this Philadelphia um, in Tampa game as well. So starting out on Philly side, we already know it's going to be Jalen Hurts. Hurts uh, probably going to be the best quarterback play on the slate overall, simply because he has that rushing upside. We already know that he does like to run it into the end zone, especially if he gets close. If he's right there at the end zone, he's going to run that thing. And it's, it's not even a question or doubt or anything in my mind. Um, especially we already know if they get in there within the five, he always has the upside to go ahead and scramble. That's what makes him such such a, a big threat. And sitting at AK. Don't mind it, of course. Um, really cash safe if you're looking at it whenever it comes down to it because I know people are probably going to have some resentment and just um, not believe in what we've seen so far of Baker considering his first two matchups. And today is going to be a real test. He's going up against a pretty decent uh, Philadelphia, Philadelphia Eagles defense, which he is going to actually have to pass because um, both of these teams are actually pretty good against the run. So I do feel like this is going to be a pass-heavy type game. I can definitely see Philly getting out ahead, which will lead to Tampa having to throw quite a bit. And a lot of that is just going to be coming on the back of Hurts going out there getting his thing done. Um, especially on the ground and through the air. And, um, yep, I, I love love this spot. Definitely will be rocking with Hurts as more than likely going to be my prime quarterback option on the slate. Going over to the running back position, I really have no interest in any of the running backs right here for Philly just because uh, Gamewell, he's going to be back. Swift, we saw him get the bulk of the carries and everything last week. Went out there, 28 uh, rushing attempts, a couple of targets as well. Dropped 30.1 fantasy points. I really don't feel like that's going to be the instance here in this case. He rushed last week. Going up against Minnesota, easy team to go out there and run against. Um, 28 rush attempts, 175 yards. I don't see that happening right here considering that um both of the first two games that Tampa Bay has played so far they, they got a pretty good um, front out there but they've kept the opposing running backs under what about 70 yards in both those games right there so I don't see that happening right here for especially what should be probably a split backfield with Swift and Gangwell being back from that rib injury that he had after uh, running out there 14 rush attempts 54 yards going up against New England in that first game so I don't see that um, happening especially with the split backfield maybe uh, Gangwell just because he has that pass catching upside that we know that he can have but really not going to mess with the backs here I, I have some interest in the other backs and in other spots right here going over to the wide receiver wide receiver position of course where I know um, targets and everything is pretty much condensed is going to be A.J. Brown um, and Smith. Uh, Devontae Smith, over the first two games, uh, seven and four um, receptions in those games, but a ton of targets as well. Um, in those games, 10 and 15, so I'm um, well, 10 and 5, so 10 targets really caught a touchdown in both those games 17, 26 fantasy points. I don't think you can go any way wrong in regards to stacking him with his quarterback, but then of course, AJ Brown, uh, 7 4, just um, a hundred dollar difference. So coming out here, looked a little frustrated in that last game, really no production out there, four receptions for 29 yards. Um, honestly, he's my play of the day, definitely feel like this is a bounce back spot. Really feel like, of course, like I said, you can throw on the Stamp Bay defense, you're not gonna be able to run against them, but you can definitely throw against them. This is one of those spots where AJ Brown. Uh, the matchup that'll be there for him getting down the field um, I can see a big game I honestly wouldn't mind if you ran both of the receivers from uh, with AJ Brown and Smith going back with Jalen Hurts I actually don't mind at all just get all of the offensive production that you can get right there that's really not a bad play um, and of course 
you, you'll just soak up everything that you can get right there. Going over to the tight end position, Dallas Goddard bounced back in a big way last week. Got a ton of targets and a lot of receptions. Six receptions um, off of seven targets. Only 22 yards out there. No touchdown or anything like that. But after coming off of one target in week one um, and having nothing in that game, he really did pretty solid in the second game. Um, really, would, would have liked a bit more production from him. Only 8.2 fantasy points. But uh, beggars can't be choosers. Don't mind Goddard. Think he's a pretty decent spot. But I do have interest in Tampa Bay's um, tight end instead of going to get dirt, but definitely a different uh, spot. Maybe you want to run a stack of Hertz, running back one of his receivers, and then run uh, go dirt. Uh, that's an easy play right there. You can run as well. Don't mind that at all. Going over to the Tampa Bay side, I'll work my way backwards since um, we went down. Um, like I said, I do have a lot of interest in Otten um, out there. Again, another team that I don't expect for them to be able to run against quite a well. Um, and I do expect Baker. This is going to be a big test for him. He's performed very well in those first two games, like I said, at least 34 pass attempts in both of those games. Um, I do expect for them to be trailing, to be behind in this game, going up against Philly. And this would be a spot where we could see uh, Otten. He's had some pretty decent targets, pretty decent receptions, and he's he's been reliable out there for Baker through these games. And I feel like he's going to be relied upon a lot, again, here in this spot, considering that it's going to be a pass rush coming after Baker. He's going to have to get it out quick. Um, you attack Philly with the... Uh, you know, receptions and things in the middle of the field. You're not going to get those long passes, things like that out on the outside to maybe a, um, a, a Godwin or a Mike Evans. Really feel like it's going to be condensed, um, little short passes, moving the um, moving the chains, things like that. And we, like I said, I'll refer back to it. Um, going back to my, my Patriots, um, Hunter Henry out there, looked great, looked amazing out there in that first game. And then TJ Hawkinson in the second game going up against them. Uh, so really I'm in for a big uh, workload and a big production here. And I really do like them, especially the 3K, pretty much almost a min price tight end. Unless you pay up for some other spots, unless you stack those receivers in other positions and things like that uh, on the slate. So I really do have a lot of interest in Otten um, as a run back, honestly, that you can take if you go with that Jalen Hurts stack. Going over to the wide, res wide receiver position, uh, definitely GPP options for me is going to be both Mike Evans and Chris Godwins here in the spot. Like I said, I really don't see those down, um, down the field, long passes, things like that, those high yards and stuff like that that we've seen from Mike Evans. Um, the targets, yeah, those will possibly be there for him inside this uh, position of the game. But Mike Evans is not someone that I'm really going to. Like I said, I don't really see those down the field passes happening here in this game. Same thing for Chris Godwin. Um, not really going to go to to both of these guys. Uh, he's sitting at 5,700. I'd rather probably play for more of the Rams or our receivers who are priced right on that same price range for uh, Godwin and Mike Evans in this position. Running back position, again, like I already said, uh, you're not going to really be able to run against this Philly team, but uh, White, we do know that he can definitely catch some passes, and he's been getting some targets out of the backfield. Uh, five um, five targets, two targets in the first two games, and he's caught them all um, out there, rushed for a little bit. Decent game, game last time out, 21.3 fantasy points. Was actually able to run a touchdown in 17 rush attempts in both games. Again, I would think more probably around this line would probably be what we will see for him. 17 rush attempts, maybe i give him close to 50 yards, but I really feel like it's going to be the pass game. Those little dump-offs and things like that that he's able to actually get uh, from Baker is what's going to make him actually pop, especially on DraftKings, a PPR web uh, site that would like to play on 5900 love this spot for him i'm um, actually do not mind going to him here in this position and would be my preferred back if i'm taking anybody in this game uh for the, the running back position going over to the quarterback i think that you can definitely pay down to baker mayfield that'll that's what will make you different on this slate is uh coming down to baker or well actually truly going into the second game playing one of those quarterbacks in that game will really is what's going to make you different because very very much guarantee that both baker and hunt um they'll they'll be more of the higher owned quarterbacks on the slate because they're in a more offensive throwout type game versus the unknown that we have coming in that Cincinnati Bengals and um, Rams game uh, right there. But Baker Mayfield looked decent in these first two games, 16, 23 fantasy points. Like I said, he's going to have to pass quite a bit. I'm definitely going to be relying on him. Um, those pass attempts, they're there. They're, we know he can scramble quite a bit, get out of the pocket, run if he has to. Uh, has looked really well. No turnovers, nothing like that in the first two games. We're going to see what he does going up in this spot right here. Don't hate him. Don't mind him, but don't feel like he's a must play that you have to have. Um, going over here to the Los Angeles Rams, before I even break that down, I'll go ahead and talk about some props that I do like. Um, Jalen Hurts, we've seen it through his first two games. He really hasn't uh, thrown the ball, hasn't gotten over um, that 237.5 <clears throat> passing yards yet in those two games. But this is a spot, like I said, run game, do not feel like it's going to be there. Definitely going to have to pass quite a bit. I don't mind looking at the 23.5 uh, passing yards. But if I'm going to take anything for Jalen Hurts, I would much rather go to his fantasy score, which is sitting at 23 fantasy points. Um, the production that he can give us with his legs and the rushing upside that he has, it, touchdowns, period, all that is going to be coming from him. Um, more than likely, I do like his fantasy score here in what should be the, the better game of the two games. Um, definitely would take the over on that if I'm looking at anything to take for Jalen Hurts. If you want to um, live a little uh, dangerously, you might be able to go ahead and take his uh, pass and, and um, rushing yards 
combo. As we do know, he can scramble. He can get there. But I much rather would take the fantasy score, 23 fantasy points. I do like the over for that right there. Um, as far as do, 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 Baker Mayfield. For Baker, I do like his pass attempts. It's sitting at 33.5. I understand that pretty much he has hit this in both games with 34 and 34. Again, this should be a pass-heavy game. I feel like the pass attempts will be there for Baker. They should be playing from behind. This will lead to quite a bit of passes. The run game should be stopping this. There's no way. Um, we're not going to say there's no way, but there shouldn't be that many holes out there for Rashad White to be able to get it going. Baker is going to have to actually pass, scramble, those things like that. The 33.5, I would take that as a safer play. I uh, do not mind that for Baker as a play that I would actually take here on the spot. And then, uh, of course, the 14.5 fantasy score, I can see it, especially if we're expecting Baker to have another clean game. Don't mind going to that as well, but I would much rather take that 33.5 pass attempts um, as being mine now as far as receptions you could definitely go with aj brown or Devonte smith as running back uh with the jalen hurts this is a game stack game theory stuff that i'm going over right here i like both of them um both five receptions they should definitely get that but aj brown like i said coming off of a pretty frustrating last game um i know that he didn't do as well as what he wanted to do and i would not mind looking at his receptions or let's see if they actually have it up here Looking at his targets, as his receiver targets or his receptions, I can see him getting pepper here in the spot. His receiving yards looks like it's already been bumped up quite a bit because it was sitting at 68.5. I don't mind taking the receiving yards, but um, those receptions, receiving targets, both of those would be more of my preferred options that I would take right there. And then again, of course, like I said, if you don't like A.J. Brown, I definitely would take one of these wide receivers here because the targets are kind of condensed for this Philadelphia team in regards to who's going to get it. Uh, Devontae Smith, 61.5. He's hit that in both of the games, so well, one of the games so far this season. But I know the um, receiving targets, uh, he had. 10 and 5 in those first two games and then um the receptions all these are pretty good options he's hit the fantasy score in both of his games but the receptions and maybe his receiving targets will probably be my more favorite too but i do lean more to aj brown being the preferred player uh, between the two and then if they do have otten up here otten well they only have his um Receiving yards sitting at 26.5. Um, since I do expect him to be quite involved quite a bit, the 4.5 receiving targets, I do not mind that. Uh, 26.5 receiving yards, definitely would, would take that as well. If they had his receptions up here, I want to say it was sitting at 2.5 earlier when I, I seen it when I was first looking over the board. But it is not up here anymore, but definitely um, that 2.5 would have been love to, to be able to get that or 3. But definitely his re uh, receiving yards and receiving targets are, are definitely options that you could take. Would definitely take the receiving yards over the receiving targets um, as plays that I would take right there. All right. Head back over uh, to DraftKings looking at it. Matthew Stafford, decent play. Um, don't mind it here going up in the spot. Um, definitely would rather take him over wh whoever we have at the quarterback position for the Bengals. Uh, 17, 18 fantasy points in his first two games. They look pretty decent um, overall. Two interceptions in that last game. It still gave you 18.98 fantasy points in that, and a loss going up against a pretty good uh, 49ers defense. So uh, Stafford definitely in play. Now, um, Kyron Williams. This guy, his usage is ridiculous. Uh, 15 and 14 rush attempts, but also the receiving uh, targets and things that he's getting out there looked amazing. Great. 17 fantasy points in the first game, 28 fantasy points in the second game um, out there for practically almost every single snap. And for him to go out there and drop 28 fantasy points against a pretty good 49ers defense, I do like that. Definitely will be my second uh, running back play that I would be on for today's slate if I am playing uh, another running back. Um, definitely but would be looking for him and Rashad White. Those those are my two favorite uh, running back plays. Uh, Puka, Tutu, um, Van Jefferson, all these guys all in play. Um, Puka just breaking records left and right out there. 15 and 20 targets through his first two games. Putting up video game numbers, 24.9 and 33.1 fantasy points. But the salary is not matching up to what is pretty much a QB, um, QB1's favorite weapon. Just like. It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous what he's doing at the wide receiver position, and I can only imagine what they're going to be able to do whenever they get cut back in this this um, this wide receiver room out there with Puka. That is going to be amazing. But um, right now it says that his oblique, he is given a questionable designation for Monday's matchup with the Bengals, but they do expect for him to play. So the questionable tag is just um, just cautionary just to have it out there. But they, he is expected to play. I definitely do like going right back to Puka, especially at the 6400 price tag. That's easy day to go ahead and fit that in with the wide receivers that we have coming from the um, the Philadelphia Eagles as well as um, running backs. And then, of course, if you want to come down off of Puka, you can definitely come down here to Tutu Atwell, who in his own right is looking pretty good. Uh, 20 and 15 um, fantasy points in those first two games, getting the targets as well along with what Puka is going out there doing. Um, definitely, you can go right here. Hasn't had a touchdown yet, so if he can run one into the house, get a touchdown, something like that, that's just going to only bolster him up. I can see him being more owned than Puka in this spot, but just the, the numbers of what Puka is doing, I guarantee you everyone's going to just try to shove Puka into their lineups because why not? Just the, the target, the share, everything that he's getting. It's ridiculous. It, it is out there. Um, oh, tight end position, going there for them. Uh, Tyler Higby, you can toss a coin, play with that, but I'd rather take uh, Otten. I'm pretty uh, high on him as my tight end for today's slate. 
Going over here to the Cincinnati Bengals, really no uh, interest in any of their tight ends. Honestly, no interest really for anybody on the Bengals outside of the running back, uh, just because we don't know what's going on at this quarterback position. If Joe Burrow is going to be out, then that's going to take a hit for all of the receiving options because we honestly don't know what Browning is going to be able to go out here and do. I know he has some rushing upside, but that's just really going to be a toss-up for me. At 5K, I'd rather just go ahead and play Baker, who is pretty much right there around that same price tag, um, over playing Browning. And then if I'm going to run anything, safety, period at all, even if Burrow was in, I'm going to play Joe Mixon. Um, because we already know Mixon, he can definitely catch some passes out of the backfield. Uh, we know he does get targeted quite a bit, and he will also get some goal line work as well. Um, so Joe Mixon, just the upside, the safety, all that is there for him, and I don't mind just going ahead and going with Joe Mixon if I'm going to take anything from this um, this Bengals team. And then as far as defenses go for all these teams, really, it's a two-game slate. Uh, defense is kind of just one of those ones where you just flip a coin, pick whichever one stands out to you, and just run right that. Um, I'm going to tell you from game theory aspect, from what I'm thinking, how I'm thinking things are going to go. I'm not going to mess with the Buccaneers or the Eagles defenses. Maybe the Eagles will be the one just in case Baker finally has that bad game, throws a couple of picks. Maybe, maybe we can get a pick six in this game for the Eagles. But outside of that, I'll probably just be running the Rams uh, defense, especially if they're going to be starting a backup uh, quarterback. That'll probably just be the, the chalk defense of the day, especially if we get that news before uh, slate lock. So um, that'll be more than likely what's going to be going on over there. Now, going over to the wide receivers and stuff for... Um, this game right here, of course, Puka, I don't see how you don't go ahead and go with that, that 6.5 receptions. I know that thing was lower than that. That has gotten a huge bump. It was sitting at 5.5 earlier today. They've already bumped it up a whole one. So he's sitting at 6.1, um, receptions. That is crazy. But the, the amount of targets and the target share that this man is getting possibly can go out there and just do it again here in the spot. 6.5. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll take the, the, the over on that. Um, just run with it and see what, what he can do. Uh, receiving yards, just the amount of yards that he's getting, the targets and the share. Don't mind going to that. Maybe might just be one of those things where we look at a NFL first half uh, type prop for for um, Puka. What do they have him at? They have him at 35.5. He's gone over that in both of those games. Maybe I would just go with that that first half uh, wide receiver prop instead of going with the, the full game if you're just worried about it uh, in regards to that aspect. So that would be something I would consider and go right there. And then let's see if they got mixed in. Um, this one right here, this is going to be more of a, a um, put it on a six flex uh, play, five flex play would be the Joe Mixon, the pass rush receiving upside uh, for him for that touchdown right there. I'll take a chance on that as another play. But outside of that, uh, those are going to be the, the only plays that I really do have some interest in for uh, for the slate. So hopefully you guys find some information pretty good in this video. Hopefully I help you guys build your lines and things like that. Make sure you guys drop a subscribe button so you don't miss any of the other content that we're putting out over here on the channel. And drop a like uh, if it really did help you guys in any way, shape, or form. We got the WNBA playoffs continuing tomorrow. We'll be back again to break that down with my boy BK. We know we guys got you covered with that. Hopefully see you guys all in the green. Peace.